Today we will going to learn how to author an HTML page. So for that reason I have first of all open up Notepad++ then I will going to go into file and save my document and I would like to choose um, the Notepad++ directory. I will going to create here a folder. I'm going to call this one uh, week one and after I create this folder I'm going to name the file first HTML page and I will going to change the file extension to hypertext markup language so you will notice automatically it will going to give it the file extension of HTML you can save your HTML files under the extension of HTML or HTM. Either way, um, it means pretty much the same thing. However, we prefer to call them HTML, HTM, uh, especially for um, those platforms that do not support uh, four-letter file extensions. So, but you have to be careful if you have called it HTM, you should not refer to that file with an HTML extension in a browser, it would not be able to open it up. Um, however, you can write the same amount of code in HTM or HTML file. So let's click save here. Now once you click save over here, now your document has been saved. However, um, we will going to make some changes to it and we, will, we would like to save it again. Now it's extremely important that we understand a, the structure of an HTML document. When we create an HTML document, we first of all must include a tag called HTML tag. Now HTML tag basically is the parent tag or we also call it the root tag. An HTML document must be enclosed within these two tags. HTML opening tag and HTML closing tag. The reason I'm using the word must, even though for those of you who have done some HTML programming or if you, as you may experience, you will be able to do this without writing that. But since we are learning to write structured program, which is what we prefer in the professional world, in the corporate world, therefore we must learn to write our code in a structured fashion. You may be using IDEs like Dreamweaver, Microsoft Expression, Web. Um, however, if you learn how to code behind the scene, then you can play around with any tool. Learning a tool doesn't really teach you how to code, so that's why I'm using this tool to teach you how to code. Plus, it is color-coded, it has some capabilities which you don't necessarily find um, in other editors like Notepad. However, you could be using HTML Kit, which is another free editor, but anyway. An HTML document is basically divided into two sections. One is a head section, and the other one is the body section. So we have opening and closing tags, or markups. Both basically means exactly the same thing. In the head section of a document, this is where you're going to put the title of the page. So we'll, we'll put in the title. Now, um, the title of the page is basically shown in the title bar. When you do not write a title of the page, then whatever the name of the file that you save it under, that will be saved, that will be shown in the title bar. So I'm going to call this is my first web page. Or in short, I can just say first web page. So you could edit information as frequently as you may like just like any other editor in this editor if I make any changes right in the corner of the tab you'll see a red color icon of a floppy disk that means the file has not been saved if you click the save button or use a shortcut control s either way the document gets saved and the symbol changes to blue color so before you run make sure that you have made these changes and now we would like to write something in the body. This is a test document. We will make some changes later on. So I'm just putting in some basic text here so that you can actually get to see your first HTML document. So now I will going to go under run. And this is where I can get to choose whichever browser I can select to run this document. So let's say if I say launch in Chrome, 
So if I choose Launch in Chrome, here I have the page in Launch in Chrome. Now notice what I wrote in the title um, of, the, of the document appears right over here in the tab, First Web Page. Now let me close this and, and let me try to view this in uh, um, Firefox, which we're going to do exactly the same thing. But notice the difference. Um, it's a different browser, so it also displays it right on the tab. Okay, so that both of them act very similar. However, now let's test this. So if I press enter here and I say, uh, this is line number two, and I save my document. Now if I go under run, and I say run in Firefox. Now notice, even though I pressed enter in my editor, but in the web page, they both appeared on the same line. That tells us that just pressing the enter key in the HTML editor does not push the content onto the next line. So I'm going to close it out here and I'm going to replace this one with some useful information. Then I'm going to try to tell you how you actually insert a new line in HTML. So let's put this uh, first web page and I'm pressing enter name. I'm just using a fictitious name, address, I'm using a fictitious address, and phone. And if I try to view this again in a browser, then you will going to notice it all appears in one long line. So if I increase the size of my browser, I could just fit it up. It just wraps to the next line. So to make all of these appear on different lines, we use a special HTML tag called BR, which means break row. And here we were able to successfully break rows. You don't need the last BR because there is no line after phone, but I'm just putting in there so that the contents after phone will automatically appear in the new line. So now if I go again to run in Firefox, now notice all contents um, get to display on different lines. Now in Firefox, I'd never close my last tab. So I have that tab open as well and this new tab, which is also open. So now I'm going to go to my last uh, version. I don't have to close it. All I need to do is refresh, which could be done by using this button, or I could use um, the shortcut control R. And when I do that, every time you refresh an HTML page, it reloads itself based on the saved file. So I'm going to go back to the original file. The original file will be decode will be will be interpreted again by the interpreter and then it will going to display you the output so if you have that page loaded into the browser once all you need to do is go back to that page and just refresh it that's about it. i'm going to give you the results so anyway <clears throat> we're going to we're going to minimize this window and we're going to come back to it at a later stage so now we're going to be doing is let me put over here instead of br i'll try hr which is horizontal row it's, this allows you to produce an HR, a long line, a long horizontal line. So let me show you what exactly that does. <clears throat> so you'll notice that here we go, between first web page and name and address and phone number, there runs a long line. That's basically what HR does. So it automatically moves itself to a line of its own and produces a line that runs from one end of the page to the other end of the page and then automatically insert a new line so all the of the follow-up uh, content will automatically go to the next line. Um, and also, what we're going to try to do now is uh, we'll try to incorporate another HTML tag called H1. Actually, H is, stands for heading, and there are a total of six heading sizes in HTML. H1 is the largest heading size. H6 is the smallest heading size. 
So I'm using the largest heading size in HTML. Well, one of the benefits of using a heading is so that it automatically increases the font size. Second of all, it pushes all the other contents which are outside of the H1. So I have opening H1, I have closing H1. So anything that is outside of the closing H1 will be automatically pushed to the next line. Now also notice HR and BR. These are two different kind of tags because they don't necessarily have a closing tag. So in XHTML, that basically has now become a de facto standard in, in, in authoring HTML that any tag that doesn't have a closing tag must be written, should be written like this, um, that you should have an opening and closing combination of the same tag. So you put a slash right within the same tag as I did with HR or BR. So now if I save my page and I go under run and then I say, okay, run in Firefox. Now here it is my page after the change and here's my page before the change. You see the difference like H1 made? So that basically what HTML is all about, uh, being able to um, create different um, effects by using different combinations of the tabs. Uh, we will going to continue to work with some more tags in the next tutorial. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.